Hi folks, in this video we'll be doing a demo on AWS WAF or AWS Web Application Firewall. We'll be using the example of a specific security vulnerability called SSRF, Server Side Request Forgery. Now this is a pretty common attack pattern that we have been seeing with cloud accounts. In SSRF, an attacker tricks the functionality of a web server and makes the server do unintended actions. Like in the case of AWS, this might involve making the web server reach out to the EC2 instance metadata server or the IMDS server. That's the attack pattern that we are going to demo in this video and see how AWS WAF could be used to prevent this attack from happening. So let's see a quick blueprint of how this demo would work. All right, so in this lab, we have a EC2 instance deployed on AWS, and this EC2 instance has been intentionally made vulnerable to SSRF attack. There are two things we are doing to make it intentionally vulnerable. One is we are installing an extremely buggy web application. This is an open source um, version of an intentionally vulnerable application, which is uh, uh, kind of like a demonstration for ITSEC teams. And the second vulnerability is the usage of IMDS v1 server for accessing the EC2 instance metadata server. v2 is much more safer as it uses tokens, but v1 is vulnerable to SSRF. Now, from the perspective of an attacker, um, the attacker is sending an HTTP request to this uh, web application, and the request is uh, curated in a way that it tricks the EC2 instance to reach out to the IMDS server, extract AWS credentials, and send those back to the attacker in the form of the, in the, form of the HTTP response, thus successfully conducting the SSRF attack. For the defense to prevent against this attack, we'll be deploying a couple of infrastructure. One is we'll be using an application load balancer, which is a prereq for web ACLs or WAF to work. And then we'll be creating a web ACL rule to detect the malformed HTTP request and block it. So this is the defense that we are going to cover in this lab. So without further ado, let's start. So in order to test for AWS WAF and see how uh, WAF could be used to prevent SSRF attack, we need to have a good example of how SSRF vulnerable application looks like on AWS. So I have created this another video on the same topic where I deploy an EC2 instance um, and create an SSRF vulnerable web application on top of it. And then in the later part of that video, I also show you how SSRF exploitation could be used to extract key AWS credentials. So please take a look at that lab. That lab will give you um, the prerequisite that's needed for uh, this lab, where then we can see how WAF could be used to prevent against this attack and how you can create your defenses um, uh, for this type of attack pattern. So let me show you briefly how we have set up the web application here. I'm in the public IP address of the EC2 instance where we have deployed the vulnerable application. As you can see, this is based out of XAMPP. Um, and uh, the application is hosted on this uh, folder called BVAP. And this is an open source version of an intentionally vulnerable web application that you can use to test out uh, a number of vulnerabilities and not just uh, SSRF. So after logging in, you can see that there are a ton of vulnerabilities here in this page and you can test those out for your um, different security patterns. The specific page that we will be focusing on is this RLFI and remote and local file inclusion page. And in this page, you can see that this page is vulnerable to SSRF. It asks you to select a type of a language. And then when you click on go, we can see that it's actually redirecting to a different PHP page or different network location within this web server. So there is an opportunity here for us to trick this web server into reaching out to the IMDS or the AWS instance metadata server location, which is this one with this um, address of 169.254.169.254. And uh, we will, as I said, we'll trick the web server into going to that network location and try to fetch um, the security credentials from there. And as you can see, we are able to successfully pull the uh, IAM role that's attached to this uh, EC2 instance, which is called S3 access role. And now if I copy and paste this role to the end of my 
uh, network application after security credentials at the top of the address bar I should be also able to pull in the AWS credentials behind this IAM role and um, we will be able to see the AWS secret access key the, the secret ID as well as the session token and we also have an expiration date here so um, this is just an introductory part of this video to show you that we have an SSRF vulnerable web application already deployed now in the later part of the video let's go on and see how AWS WAF could be used to prevent against this attack so let's start our defense against uh, SSRF uh, with using AWS WAF service. Now for WAF, uh, we can only associate WAF or WebACL with a limited set of AWS resources. Uh, it cannot be associated with an EC2 instance. So we can either use global resources like CloudFront distributions or regional resources like uh, uh, ALBs, application load balancers, AppRunner, AppSync, API gateways. So um, in order to use WAF for EC2, we will be creating an application load balancer. So I'll be using the, uh, the command line for creating uh, the application load balancer. The first thing that we'll be doing is creating the target group. And uh, as the name suggests, target group is essentially a group of configurations or network configurations to be used uh, uh, for uh, the targets of the load balancer. So in this case, we have uh, our protocol as HTTP and port as 80, which is where the web application is listening or the EC2 instance is list listening. And then we have the target type as instance and uh, attached to the VPC. So with that, our target group is created and I'm going to copy the AR into my local variable so that it can be referenced later. Now we will register our EC2 instance where the web application is as a target uh, to this target group ARN. So we'll use the register targets command and uh, put the target group ARN and the instance ID. So with that, our EC2 instance is now registered as a target to the target group ARN. Now we are ready to create our load balancer. The only configuration that needs to go into the load balancer is attaching it to the submits within the VPC and the security group. Uh, now we have not covered creation of the VPC um, or the submits in this video uh, because this was covered in the previous video where we created the SSRF vulnerable application. Uh, but the fundamentals here is that uh, the load balancer needs to be attached to um, two or more submits in two or more availability zones. So make sure when you're creating the VPC, um, make sure to create those two submits in two different availability zones. And the security group that we are using is the same security group that was attached to the AC2 instance. And the reason is because uh, the ALB uh, would allow the same traffic that was being allowed as part of the AP as part of the EC2. So with that, let me run this command and create our load balancer. And yes, the load balancer is now created. We are again going to store the load balancer ARN in our local variable so that this could be referenced later. All right, so the final piece on the puzzle is creating the listener for the load balancer. And we want to forward our HTTP port 80 traffic to the target group ARN that we created earlier. So let me run this command. And with that, our listener is now created and we have finished the configuration for the load balancer. Now, let me switch to the AWS console and show you how this load balancer looks in the AWS console side of things. So in the AWS console, I'm going to go to the EC2 section and click on load balancers. Now, I do see my load balancer created here called my load balancer and it's in a state of provisioning right now but in terms of configuration i do see that's attached to the right vpc it has the uh, two availability zones in two subnets that we assigned and uh, we can also see that the listener that we created is listening on port 80 http forwarding to the my target group right and the target group itself uh, if we check the configuration here, we can see that it's forwarding the traffic or the target is registered for the EC2 instance, which is the EC2 instance for the web application. So it looks correct so far. Now I'm going to go back to the load balancers and um, the load balancer still is in the provisioning state, but I do see 
um, the DNS name for this load balancer and this will be the new address for our web server going forward since um, we will be using this DNS name instead of the public IP address of the EC2 to reach out to the web server. So uh, let me copy this and paste in the web browser uh, instead of the public IP address of the website and uh, see uh, what happens. So currently this page is not reachable and the reason for that is uh, because our load balancer is still in the provisioning state. So let me pause this video here and I'll get back to it when this load balancer is ready. All right, so our load balancer is now in an active state. So let's go back to the browser and see if the website is now being displayed. And so yeah, this is working as expected. The load balancer is uh, um, sending traffic to the redirecting traffic to the EC2 and um, so let's go back to our Bucky web application now and see if the SSRF vulnerabilities are still existing. Now we haven't really changed anything or we haven't really um, created any kind of defense against SSRF so everything should still be same but let's give it a try. So after logging in what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy the same path as uh, we had earlier with uh, the public IP address, the path which was vulnerable to SSRF, uh, the path that was reaching out to the IMDS server and getting the security credentials. And I'm gonna copy this and paste it at the end of my current load balancer um, uh, endpoint path. And let's see, let's hit enter and see what happens. All right, so the same thing as before, the website or the load balancer in front of the EC2 is still vulnerable to SSRF. We can see the access key ID, the secret access key, as well as the session token um, in the output. All right, so we are now in the final and fun part of this video, which is creating the WAF web ACL to prevent SSRF. So we are in the AWS console and I have clicked on the WAF section and uh, I'll we'll be creating a web ACL from here. So the first thing that we have to be mindful of, again, that we are two kinds of resources that you can associate with WAF web ACL. One is your CloudFront distributions, which are global resources, and the other are regional resources like application load balancer, uh, which is what we are going to do in this video. So uh, let's select the region, the same re region where the EC2 instance is. Let's give this web ACL a name. And then we're going to add the AWS resource, which is the same load balancer which we have created earlier um, called the My Load Balancer. We'll click on Add. And then we're going to select this load balancer and click on Next. We will now add a rule to this web ACL. Uh, now there are like two kinds of rules. There are managed rules which are created and maintained by third parties that provide you with default web application security um, preventions with WAF. But for this video, we are going to create our own rule. So let's select that. So you can have multiple types of rules with WebACL. You could have an IP set, which uh, specifies the list of IP addresses uh, if you're looking to block or allow a specific set. So you could have cases where you have bots hitting your web, uh, um, web uh, server, right? And you want to block, detect and block that traffic. So you could use IP sets for that purpose. Uh, then you can also have a custom rule builder which inspects the actual content of the queries that your web server is receiving. That's the rule builder option. And then finally, you have the ability to group rules or categorize rules into a group. For this demo, we are going to use the rule builder because we want to inspect the, um, the URLs to see if uh, uh, the input of the URL is actually HTTP or HTTPS. So we're going to use the rule builder option for that. Let's give this rule a name. And uh, within this rule type, we have two different rule types. Um, I don't know why AWS has made this complicated. It should be pretty straightforward. But we're going to use the regular rule type here. The other one uh, is for rate limiting purposes. And then in the rule, we're going to say, if the request matches this statement, um, then do this, right? And in the statement, we are inspecting all the query parameters that are being supplied as part of the web request. And then we're saying the query parameters should match this regular expression. 
and the regular expression goes like this if the string is starting with http or https colon backslash backslash followed by any string so basically a regular expression for detecting urls and if that statement is true then the action should be block and uh, we will also add a custom response error code of 403 with this uh, error message and we'll also add a custom body uh, as a response back uh, and we can say uh, error vaf block this message block this request uh, since url is disabled and we'll save this response body so with that our rule is now ready we have created a custom rule to detect and block web URLs being supplied as part of request parameters. And we are also sending back a custom response body. Let's create an add rule. And since this is the only rule in this rule group, we're just gonna click next on this page and also um, select the default priority in the next place page as well. Uh, for CloudWatch, we want to enable sample requests so that we can see if this rule is working as expected. So let's select that. And then finally, let's create this web ACL. So I'm in the AWS console and I can see that my web ACL has been created. And if I click on it, I can see all the traffic that is going through this web ACL. And it also gives you a count of like what is blocked and what service allowed. Um, Right now, everything is zero since there is no traffic since we have created the web ACL. Even with the web ACL now implemented, the website, if accessed through the IP address, would still be vulnerable to SSRF. I'm in the website now, and as you can see, if I'm accessing the web page in, in the vulnerable path using the IP address, the website is still vulnerable. And the reason for that is that the WAF is associated with the load balancer. It's not associated with the EC2 instance. So be mindful of that. Okay, let's try to access the website using the my load balancer path now. So I've copied over the DNS name of the load balancer. And uh, we are still accessing the same vulnerable SSRF path to access the EC2 instance metadata server. And let's see what happens now after we have enabled the web ACL. All right, there you go. So the WAF has successfully detected that we are supplying uh, HTTP parameter uh, in our request and has detected this and blocked the request uh, with the same message that we provided as part of the web ACL. Um, so this is working as expected. And if I go back to the AWS section for WebACL, I can see that the traffic is now populated. I can see a couple of requests that have been blocked. So this is it for the lab. Uh, we have successfully demonstrated how to use web uh, a application firewall or AWS WAF to prevent a type of SSRF attack. Thanks for watching.